Conic Sections Examples of Graphing Parabolas In the previous video, we examined the equations for parabolas opening up, down, right, and left. When the square is on the x term, the parabola opens up or down. Those parabolas are functions because they pass the vertical line test. When the square is on the y term, the parabola opens to the side. Those parabolas are not functions. They do not pass the vertical line test. P is the distance from the vertex to the focus. When P is positive, the focus is above the vertex or to the right. When P is negative, the focus is below the vertex or to the left. The directrix is always on the opposite side of the vertex from the focus. Now we look at some examples and graph them by using these equations. Our first parabola example is x minus 1, the quantity squared, equals 8 times the quantity y plus 2. We see that the square is on the x term, so we're going to use the form of the equation x minus h, quantity squared, equals 4p times y minus k. Our problem is already pretty close to this form. We don't have much to do. We do have to factor a 4 out of the coefficient 8, making it 4 times 2, and each of the quantities should be the variable minus something, x minus h, y minus k. So for y plus 2, we write it as y minus negative 2. This gives us a vertex, hk, at 1, negative 2. We can graph that here. And it gives us p equals 2, so the focus should be two spaces in the positive direction from the vertex. Because the square is on the x, this parabola will open either up or down. Because p is positive, it opens up. We go two spaces up from the vertex to get the focus, then two spaces below the vertex for the directrix, and that makes the focus and the directrix four spaces apart. That means we need to go four spaces to the left and right of the focus to get the ends of the lattice rectum. We can draw a parabola through those points, and the last thing to add is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry always passes through the focus and the vertex and is perpendicular to the directrix. Now for another parabola example. x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals negative 4y plus 12. Again, the square is on the x, so we're going to use the standard form x minus h quantity squared equals 4p times the quantity y minus k. On the left side of the equation, we have x squared plus 4x plus 4, which can be factored as x plus 2, the quantity squared. On the right side of the equation, the y has a coefficient of negative 4. We factor out that coefficient, leaving negative 4 times the quantity y minus 3. For the finishing touches, to put it in the correct form, we need x minus something and y minus something, so we make our x plus 2 x minus a negative 2. We also need to factor a 4 out of the coefficient, so we write it as 4 times negative 1. This gives us a vertex at negative 2, 3. We can plot that point, And it gives us a p of negative 1. So the focus will be one space in the negative direction from the vertex. Since the square is on the x, this parabola must open either up or down. Since p is negative, it opens down. The focus is one space below the vertex, and the directrix, of course, is in the other direction, one space above the vertex. This makes the focus and the directrix two spaces apart, so from the focus we go two spaces to the left or right to find the ends of the lattice rectum. This allows us to draw a parabola and, as a final touch, add the axis of symmetry, passing through the focus and the vertex perpendicular to the directrix. Here's a third example parabola. 6x equals y squared minus 2y minus 11. Here we see we have a square on the y, so we use the standard form y minus k quantity squared equals 4p times the quantity x minus h. I'm going to have the parts of this equation trade sides, moving the y to the left and the 6x to the right, so that it looks a little more like the standard form. I would like the y to be part of a perfect square, but y squared minus 2y minus 11 is not a perfect square. So we add 11 to both sides, 
and we get y squared minus 2y equals 6x plus 11. To complete the square, I need y plus or minus something inside the square, and as you may recall, what we want in that square is half of the coefficient on the linear term. The linear term is the y that doesn't have an exponent. Its coefficient is negative 2, so I want negative 1 here. Then we add the square of that to both sides of the equal sign. The square of negative 1 is 1. I add that to both sides. So now the left is y squared minus 2y plus 1, which is equal to y minus 1, the quantity squared. And on the right, we have 6x plus 12. We have to factor out the coefficient on the x, which is a 6, leaving us 6 times the quantity, x plus 2. And then, to put it in the standard form, we need to write that coefficient of 6 as 4 times something. Well, 4 times 6 fourths will work, and we write the x plus 2 as x minus a negative 2. This gives us a vertex at negative 2, 1. We can plot that point. And p is 6 fourths, which reduces to 3 halves, or 1.5. The square is on the y, so the focus must be to one side of the vertex, not above or below. And p is positive, so the focus is on the positive side of the vertex, that is to the right, one and a half spaces. The directrix is the same distance from the vertex, but on the other side, so it's one and a half spaces to the left of the vertex. This makes the focus and the directrix a total of three spaces apart, and so we go three spaces above and below the focus to get the ends of the lattice rectum. We can sketch our parabola through those points, and as a final touch, add the axis of symmetry through the focus and the vertex perpendicular to the directrix. Our final example has the messiest algebra. 4y squared minus 12y plus 8x minus 11 equals 0. We see there's a square on the y, so I'm going to use the standard form y minus k quantity squared equals 4p times the quantity x minus h. In the standard form, the y squared term doesn't have a coefficient. In my parabola, I have a coefficient of 4 on the y squared. So the first thing I do is divide all the way through by 4, leaving 1y squared minus 3y plus 2x minus 11 fourths equals 0. Then I need to keep the y pieces on the left, y squared minus 3y, and put the other pieces on the right, negative 2x plus 11 fourths, so that I can complete the square in the y. To complete the square, I need y plus 1 half of the coefficient on the linear term. That coefficient is negative 3, so half of it is negative 3 halves. If I square negative 3 halves, I get 9 fourths. I need to add 9 fourths to both sides. So the left side, y squared minus 3y plus 9 fourths, is equal to y minus 3 halves the quantity squared. And on the right side, I have minus 2x plus 11 fourths plus 9 fourths. Well, 11 and 9 is 20, so I have 20 fourths, which reduces to 5. Now, on the right side, I have to factor out the coefficient on the x, which is negative 2. So I have negative 2 times the quantity x minus 5 halves. And finally, I need to write that coefficient as 4 times something. Negative 2 is 4 times negative 1 half. This gives me a vertex at x equals 5 halves and y equals 3 halves. I can plot that point here. And p is negative 1 half. Because the square is on the y, you know the parabola opens to the side. Because p is negative, you know that the focus should be on the left side of the vertex, not the right. So I go 1 half space to the left of the vertex for the focus and one half space in the other direction from the vertex for the directrix. That makes the focus and the directrix one space apart, so I want to go one space away from the focus, up and down, to find the ends of the lattice rectum. This allows me to sketch a parabola, and finally I can add the axis of symmetry passing through the focus and the vertex perpendicular to the directrix. In these four examples, we've seen parabolas that open up, down, left and right. We've completed the square and we've worked with fractions. This should give you a good start on your parabola graphing problems. In the next video, we consider the ellipse.